Uh, we have today some uh, some good. Uh, we have uh, House Bill 3003, 3003. What it is is it's actually in lieu of I-940, the in, pub, uh, citizens initiative uh, that we also call uh, de-escalate uh, Washington. I think I misspelled something. All right, so it's de-escalate Washington, but in legislative bill form. So it's kind of flattering that our legislature uh, liked our citizens, the citizens work so much that they will own it themselves. And that might be a little hint of what's the bad. Uh, they've also, uh, so it, yay, they've passed it. And, and by an overwhelming majority, I believe there was 73 yays. So that is a bipartisan support. And I, I'm very glad of that. Uh, it does mean that uh, we don't get to vote on it as a uh, state, as the initiative process puts it on our ballot. So it's flattering and good that they recognize the quality legislation that it is. Uh, the negative is that it, it kind of waters down the impact of the citizens' hurrah on doing the hard work of getting it there. Uh, we got it there because they didn't. So I just want to own the good and the bad of that. So then we have Senate Bill 3, I'm sorry, 5386 coming up. And I'm, I'm reading it. And I will admit that I would rather be sitting with someone who is used to reading legislation. So I have more study to do on this. It is supported. It's primarily sponsored by Democrats, but there's a Republican who has sponsored it as well. Some of the feedback, social feedback I've had on this bill is that it protects Washington from Tim Iman style uh, initiatives that sometimes violate our state constitution. So what I don't understand is that there's already a process by which initiatives are reviewed for constitutionality. And so either the process was broken or not fully established when Tim Iman's previous bills have come through, uh, or they abused the system somehow. Also, uh, so the name of SB 5386 is strengthening the initiative process by providing for more comprehensive review before initiatives receive ballot titles. And so far as I can tell, it adds a step of approval and it lengthens the time from seven days to 20 days that the review is made in uh, by the Secretary of State, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, they review the constitutionality, the legal, the, the legal aspects of this law to make sure that, I mean, if we put forth an initiative that violates law already, that initiative cannot move forward. So there are, checkpoints on the initiative par uh, process. What we need to make sure is that any change to the citizens initiative is not based on protecting us from one person who has abused the process in the past. And by one person, really, we're talking about his corporate sponsors. So we, we also need to remember that, that it's not just one person, it's his corporate sponsor. We're trying to protect ourselves from corporate manipulations. So I do support the intent. I do think that we might be able to create a different solution to this problem because we do not want to make the citizens initiative process harder for citizens. We want to eliminate the ability to purchase ballot access through the initiative, uh, citizens initiative process. So there are other solutions, I think, that we need to look more closely at. And this whole good and bad of these two bills really cul cul culminate into the idea that is most important to me in this segment. Do not become complacent. Just because the Democrats are in control of the legislature does not mean that everything that they do is in our best interest, because we must remember that while our communities are made up primarily of 
people who vote Republican or Democrat, and a little nod to all the people not voting, wake it up, people. But the voters of the average voter, Democrat, Republican, is not the same as the Democrat and Republican we talk about at, uh, who are already in elected office. That's when I start talking about uh, corporatists and the oligarchy. So the centrist Dem or the centrist Republican does not translate to a centrist elected official. It translates to a corporatist elected, elected official. So we need to make sure that the donors, no matter the party, are not leading the legislature. So one, that means we have to run uncorrupted candidates at the state level, and we need to vote for them, and we need to hold account, hold those who are already in office uh, accountable for these kinds of actions. Uh, last week, we talked about uh, Senate Bill 6617, where the governor vetoed it, and I mentioned then, we don't thank Governor Inslee for doing the right thing when he was, when it was because we held his feet to the fire. We have to thank ourselves. So do not become complacent just because the right letter has the majority in the uh, legislature. We do have to stay vigilant. Stay vigilant. And uh, we're told to vote in a way that can sometimes mean a compromise on our values based on viability. We can't keep doing that. And, uh, but when we do do that, we're told to vote for those people and then we'll hold their feet to the fire. But what seems to happen is that we, we relax. And it happened with Obama because he took two wars and expanded it to eight, and there was no anti-war movement. So people, we have to stay awake and we have to keep burning. So throw another log on the fire and stay vigilant. Thank you.